I'm so happy with this uh, conversation. It's a kind of coincidence that I thought to put you together because you have both such amazing career, so much experience in human research, in, in, in anthropology in the world. And I think we can learn a lot of your experiences, both. I wanted to start with you, Cecil, to, um, to explain this, this kind of passion of you to, to search for, <laughs> for smell, but also for memory, I guess. That's what you say sometimes. I'm looking for in the collective and individual memories. And uh, I mean, it, it remains fascinating what, what you are doing and, and how you can translate it to uh, the world today. So I want to listen to you a little bit to know more about those 7,000 smells and, <laughs> and the story behind. Uh, just to correct you a little bit, 7,000, that was maybe 10, 10 years ago. It's a little bit wow, more Wow, you see? Yeah, yeah you see? <laughs> Time passed by and I breathe, I still breathe. Every breath I wow. do, and I, I inhale and melt molecules of interest. So it's, a, it's an endless journey and an endless passion. Yeah, um, the topic of smell, molecules, the invisible reality that surround us, full time, all the time, contain multiple components that determine who we are, where we are, and what's going on. Unfortunately, we live in a world that's driven by how things look like, so we tend to overlook the importance of smell in its utter meaning beyond, of course, the commercial application we so much and so well known. And at one point, marketing took over where science left. And what I have tried to do with my work is literally bring back science, look into what is air, what is breathing, what is the air containing beyond, you know, the obvious, the obvious reasons for having it around us. So over the tw 25 to 30 years, I've been passionating, passionately, um, you know, analyzing, investigating into smell components through chemistry, anthropology, and archaeology, and, and, and the list is long. There are smells everywhere. There's a whole world to smell, and there's a whole world to educate how to smell. So, yes, it's, it's uh, uh, amazing. And what it also does to me as a human, it makes life and being alive complex and, and complete again, you know, and I have been um, understanding the sense of smell even more now in, uh, in lockdown and with uh, the, you know, with the issue that we are all concerned about, how important it is to use all the senses for the purpose of life. So, yeah, I am uh, doing that uh, with full, full, full time attention and uh, yeah, there's never a dull moment. I see that you you still are <laughs> as passionate as as I ever know you <laughs> since we know each other. And there is a kind of connection with Fabien, I think, because Fabien, you you have to explain also that uh, research uh, closed cloud based medical imaging software because that's what you was first your first job. It's so nice to meet you, Cecile, and your work is so yes. inspiring and, and fascinating. So thank you. Thank you, Linda, for, for organizing this. But it's true that for me, recently I was really thinking about combining two words in my life. The first word is a word of creativity, and that can take several forms of innovation, of ideas, and the power of ideas. And the other word is a word of impact. And I love the idea of combining them together for really having human one of the work I did recently was to bring ways, I think, on healthcare, this notion of really trying to invent something that will have um, the way to really drive and change the way we will take care of our health and our patient care. And so we did that by launching a new platform. Um, today, the way healthcare is being done, and still very much today, actually, even through COVID, um, often being done very opinionatedly, like a physician sees you and make a recommendation based on a very small amount of information uh, about yourself and about all the other patients like you in the world. They don't have access today to the data to really help them. Like when you drive from place A to B and you have a GPS, you have far more information that this region has. And so what if we can leverage the power of the internet and the power of the data to really inform and help and assist physicians with all the data to really diagnose better and, and help patients in a better way. And so we've done that 
Um, nobody thought when we started, you can use a browser and AI to diagnose patients around the world clinically. Um, we did more than 100,000 of them, a lot of work on newborn that have heart defects, which is actually an interesting domain because it's very graphically beautiful as well. You can see the blood flow inside the body, with all the colors going in different vessels. It's very artistic in a way. Um, we done a lot of work for cancer, uh, which was very gratifying and, and more to come. So trying to really move the needle a little bit um, and impact patient lives by helping physicians. And you, new ideas um, come from crossroads of science and humanities. Is that also a lesson for, because you're not in the fashion industry and I'm happy for that because don't do that ever. But uh, although <laughs> Cecil, you did, you did some small events for Balenciaga recently last year with our other show. I'm still but, working passionately with Balenciaga, and like, is it? This, okay. this Sunday we are, in, uh, you know, we are uh, presenting the next collection with another smell, and so that's uh, an ongoing uh, ah, journey. That's so. right. Yes, that's why they called me in uh, yes. today. Yeah, okay. Yes, Fantastic. yes, you should uh, you should open your nose for for another another Fantastic. adventure. <laughs> really great, Prepare. really great. Yeah, no, it's no, it's a never ending story. No, for sure. You know, I I mean, what means corporate world? I do work with the corporate world. I need to survive somehow. You know, selling invisibility is not so you know successful these days, and maybe uh, I mean, maybe now it will change. I hope so. Um, yes, uh, I I've been kind of putting myself between research, hardcore research, innovation, and also commercial uh, work, and also most of all education. So try to combine the four uh, really is very important for what I do. You know, one is dependent of the other. And I think what I have accomplished very well, and I think somehow I can also be a role model for a lot of young people is to to see it is possible to modify one's knowledge for multiple purposes. And I think the most important is that the knowledge is solid and the passion and the commitment to what you do is here essential. And um, yeah, that is also half of my success story, you know, to, to really show the, the and, and bring that across in every aspect of what I do. So also in the context of commercial application, you know, I am not interested in making another perfume. Uh, there is enough of it out there and, and uh, you know, and I have nothing against it. I just think there is a completely, this, um, completely need to understand this uh, dimension of lie, which goes invisible and with, with the knowledge that is there for the, and we can use that for that purpose, you know, not only to cover up the world, but also to re re reveal the world with the same knowledge. So my position here is literally to do that. Challenge knowledge, bring the, the real world into a big corporation. And this, in this context, IFF, who have been supporting my research for the last 15 years, and challenge the knowledge within and bring it together with the knowledge outside. And literally bring which you know uh, science uh, and the corporation to the real life. You know, connect them to the issues in the world, which is so very difficult for so many corporations to really get 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 access to. You know, because it's yeah, you have to want it. You know, so I'm kind of the catalyst out of here. I think I can say the catalyst. I like that catalyst. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Fabian. After that experience, now you are interested, or maybe you were always were in the art world, and you have that EF studio, you found it out. Tell a bit about the idea behind yeah, the, very happy the studio. To. Yeah, of course. So I think I have this kind of a weird background, which is in a way I grew up like, like my whole childhood was really around art and my parents were in art, my friends are in art, they still today. But I sent out deep into science, isn't it? And I always find it actually fascinating, the idea of connecting the dots. What, what um, since you mentioned about how you really go to different art, but also science and education, I think they're all interconnected and interweaved. And I think it's really interesting. And I always wanted to find a place that was under one roof in some way, uh, an artist next to an engineer, next to a physician, next to a, a philosopher, next to an anthropologist, 
to really start launching organization for social good, they'll get the creation of art and science. And so the idea would be to be able to not be architect for building, but architect for organization, you know? Yeah. And so you'll be able to really now really look at the biggest world problem, but you have all the talents under one place from all these cross disciplinary function um, to be able to really address them in a new way. And so in physics, we've seen that if you have the same input, you get to the same output. But if you change radically the input, you also change radically the output. And so by bringing very different point of view around the table, around this problem, you enable a new way of thinking. Um, there's been, of course, Cecil, you're bringing that a lot through your work around uh, smell, but there's Mary Oxman at MIT Media Lab that's done that by connecting biology and architecture. Um, uh, Apple stands from that kind of connection. And I think there's be a lot of ways for this to affect education, healthcare, homelessness, all the big problems, climate change, and think about it from a very new way. Surprisingly, it doesn't exist. And so the idea is to call it if, and if stands for an invention factory. And the idea you create an if in US, but an if in Africa, and if in Europe, and if in Asia, and if in the Middle East, to also cross pollinate against uh, cross cultures. And so, um, and launch uh, for profit, because we also have to live a non profit, but also art project. And so that's uh, something I'm really passionate about. It's like bridging different fields to go from anthropology to sociology to physics to healthcare to different work, I think is so enriching. And there's always dots in those totally. connections. Yeah. And just, I love your wall. I feel there's so many memories and story behind each of those little bottles yes. you have behind oh, you. Yes. <laughs> My library, one of them. <laughs> there are many. <laughs> yeah, it's my books. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that uh, what you're saying about this uh, complex uh, way of bridging all different uh, uh, people and uh, experiences is missing in education, especially in fashion education. I think Am it's I right? everywhere. I think it could be really leveraged Socially. to do so many different ways of thinking about the world. I think we, we started from that, isn't it? In the 1600s, the Renaissance was all about interconnecting those fields and then they branched mm -hmm. out to be very siloed. But now we've seen a lot of those cross connection and I felt to invent a new world, we really need to bring them back together more than ever before, I think. That was a bit my idea of writing this uh, container idea, uh, stepping out of the fashion system like it is and go in the neighborhoods, reaching people from other uh, experiences and bringing something more emotional, again, more human to the field. Um, what I like also in, in what you said, uh, Cicely, what I wrote about your work is that smell can help tolerance. I've, I thought yes. that's so beautiful. Can you can you talk about that? Yes, we are born neutral. Humans, cockroaches and rats are the biggest generalists on planet Earth. And the purpose of smell in the nose, and, the, and now we not only have sensors in the nose, all over the skin. The kidney have sensors, the egg smell, the sperm, etc. The list is long. You know, that's, you know, that is a fact. And, and we cope with whatever smell setting there is. You know, we get used to it. And that's not for the reason that the nose very quick gets tired because it adjusts to the situation that it is placed in and immediately it cope with it. And, and uh, we have to survive, you know. And we live in a world that's sanitized, sterilized, and, and, and now even more than ever for, for protection, kind of. But we are missing out the, the core information. So, of course, the body and the system is suffering. And, you know, we are living in a world where we are operating after bad and good and clean and dirty, yes and no. And that is not enough. That's very superficial type of information. And, you know, the smell is, 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 is very important here to, to become neutral towards a smell beyond, you know, all this marketing and, and the rhetoric out there is essential to be able to, to face all of these issues we are, are confronting, you know? So a lot of what I try to do in the work is to take real smells, record them, replicate them to chemistry, reproduce them, decontextualize them, take them out of its comfort zone, place them in a comfortable setting and train awareness until 
that awareness is beyond, you know, beyond doubt. So then with that in the backpack, go back to reality without any prejudice whatsoever. We can be tolerant towards skin color, religion, and so back and so forth. But if the smell is not right, that's the end of the sympathy. That is what, what is reigning most of the world. And I think it's, it's, again, back to education. We need to learn our kids to accept, you know, not only what is there for the eye, but also what is there for the nose. And we start off life using all our senses, back to what you, you said, uh, you know, about creativity. You know, to be creative is like being a child. It's like never stop being a child. Being curious is using all your senses. Being curious, getting information, provided by the senses into your body and your brain and your memory, you know, and trigger your memory and your emotion. And off we go. And learning in the context of emotion is essential to learning, you know. It's not without a reason we are learning most when between zero and puberty. And whatever we learn later might stay there, but definitely what we learn at that period stay. And that is why, because we learn in the context of play and joy and with all our senses. So. Yeah, these are just facts. So I try to apply those facts to whatever I do. And if I do workshop with you know, CEOs of Deutsche Bank or, you know, kindergarten in my neighborhood, nobody leave those workshop, you know, without a big smile on their face. You know why? Because I just smell the reality they live in. You know, they didn't smell the fragrance or detergent or the soap they normally use, but the garbage, the dog shit, the dirty street, etc. And that tells quite a lot, you know, we don't, we are cheating too much, you know, and tolerance is a key, key word here for, for, to, for, for, yeah, approaching a lot of these issues, you know. Sorry. Yeah, your reaction. <laughs> oh, Fabian. yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it's amazing. And, and just, I can listen and this is such an incredible, fascinating topic. So I think the smell is fascinating because it's also the one close order to the brain, isn't it? It's very interesting oh, connected to the brain. It's one of the only things that is non-spatial as well, which is really yeah. interesting because it creates a surrounding right away. I don't know if that's true, Sister. Maybe you can correct me if that's wrong, but I've heard that the center of the universe it, it tastes of rum and raspberries. And there's a smell of raise <laughs> because the ethyl ethanol format, which is basically the, the alcohol with other basically compound. So I thought that was also an interesting one. I don't actually create that <laughs> that smell, but I thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, some of the molecules, the first molecules on the planet are still around, you know. So we might say, you know, buy, pass pass on, you know, some of the same molecules, you know, I might blow it out and you get it in two days or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, that is the, the, the world that I think needs to be, you know, taken a bit more serious. And I think also now after this experience, so many people have had losing the sense of smell, suddenly they wake up and like, oh my God, I didn't know we ha I had one, you know? And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, and the knowledge is there, you know, not just, not just in chemistry, which is my background. I mean, look in neuroscience, look in psychology, look in anthropology, look in every, every, every aspect of science, you know, this sense of smell has so much more, the knowledge around smell is so much more advanced than it was when I started off 25 years ago. Nobody knew, what are you doing? Are you making another perfume? I said, no, I don't think. <laughs> The world needs them <laughs> even then i uh, dare to say that but uh, yeah it, it is changing and uh, so just the fact that i work with some huge corporation and they don't approach me to make another fragrance or a room spray they approach me like who are we on behalf of how we smell and i have the skill and the knowledge and the technology to show them how they smell and then we start to talk you know and i think this is um, i think this is the new future also after having you know scaled down understood you know so much more about life and being alive and how vulnerable one is you know is is it's it's uh, yeah it has to change and this also you know we have something for sure, and that is the body and the sense. Everything else costs money, you know? First, we need to recharge and re-educate how to use what we have for free. And then I think the rest, uh, you know, can follow, you know, without so much problem. Uh, first of all, we have a smell ID as unique as our fingerprint. Uh, hardly anybody know this, you know? And 
because we never had a chance. We smell our mother's deodorant before we smell the mother milk. So it is really, you know, it's really disturbing. So we should try to find out what's going on before we start to add on in, in all aspects of adding on. And I think that is part of what education should be, you know, and then we carefully apply if it's needed. And if not, at least we know why not. Yeah. So, you know, less is more in, in, a, in, a, in this utter meaning. That's what I try to, to say. And in the context of application or, or, or communication, of course, you carefully can apply a smell. And you, if it's only about you knowing what the purpose of the smell is, that's enough. You program your brain to be in a certain mood or make the smell do half of the communication that is already something something different and you have at least you yourself enjoy and that is contagious you know so i think it's 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 very complex and very beautiful uh you know to work with smells because it it has a huge uh, potential you know beyond what has been the case in so many ways it's amazing i i really agree with that i think it's so subjective and smell is so subjective and uh, it's so powerful. What I would love to know is like, why for you, it was so obvious that was your past. What, why did you build, you build your career on, on, on smell? Do, do you know why? Listen, I grew up in Iceland, Norway. I was passionate about outdoor. I never ever, uh, you know, was interested in wearing any, I you know, perfume or deodorant. I was just very curious about air and why air is so important, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, why air bring weather, why air bring topic of small talk number one in the world, you know, why air is, is so many things and, and, and starting to ask very naive questions around this invisibility that filled me with so much more than, than I know and, and knew at that, that point. So it's, it's a very naive childish uh, kind of process. And, reason for 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 doing what i do and back to what i said in the beginning you know literally i never stopped being a child and never stopped being just relying on what i see i always suffered and and also born in an island and grew up in an island make me you know the the, the topic of being curious was in my genes you know so i often start and i decided to to try it out, to try literally to be my own guinea pig and see what the purpose of the senses were, were meant to be. And what if I turn on and off and, you know, amplify some of the senses more than the other, what would that bring me? Would I become, you know, different? Would I change something? Would I uh, understand the world I live in better? And the answer is yes. Seven years of field work, traveling the globe, using my sense of smell as a navigator, made me another human being. And this passion and commitment I have today is because of that. I dare to jump out in that deep water that surrounded my ocean, my, my island, and I couldn't even swim. So yeah, that is what I mean with the passion and commitment, and which is so very little, you know, in all aspects of education, to educate our kids to have a passion, to find their passion. How do we do that, you know? And I think the key here is also to look into what is the body? What is the body and the mind and the soul and the senses all about, you know? So start the biology, psychology, etc., chemistry, and then off we go with all the other innovation and, you name it, I say, technology, etc. But first we need to have the basic on place, yeah? So, long story short, off I went, uh, I went as far as I could get away from home. So I went to East Europe, and in East Europe, I couldn't find any material. So I was literally dependent on the air I was breathing. And I was in the middle of, 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 of the revolution, of the falling of the wall, and I was like hiding in the bushes, trying to make sense of the world, smelling and smelling and, you know, recording and recording and understood that yeah it it made me survive not having to rely on sem semiotics and uh, semantics and, and and vision i could rely on a lot of information that makes sense out of it and have a fun time even if i was suffering so yeah that's uh, my background and then i of course study chemistry and linguistics and, and my thoughts very early on I cannot sit in a lab pretending I know about life by being, you know, working with the topical smell 
when I know smell is happening outside in the real life. So I decided to add on with art and innovation so that I had a platform where I could perform and show my research in the real life. So I perform and I, you know, do research using my name uh, on the platform rather than sitting in the lab writing papers and, and having to, 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 to refer to we think this is and we should to do this, etc. So I post the questions, I, um, I find the answer. If I don't find the answer, I move on to the next step. So using the creative platform where it doesn't matter who you are as long as you deliver was you know, very important for where I am today. I had to have that freedom and to, yeah, to, to just, yeah, to explore what it means to be a human being and to be alive. That's what I do. Real and reality is my topic of concern. By understanding yeah. invisibility, I think that's an interesting combination, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's what so about you? Come on, what is your passion? Where do, what, yeah, what's, your, what's your journey? You know, we, I, we, you know, yeah, tell me. <laughs> I, I, I have so many questions for you. I feel like I'm, I'm drawn to be no, selfish. No, but it's not about you me. Ask, we can learn do that from another you. time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not about me. It's about all of us. So tell me um, your story. Yeah. I think my story is about really this notion of in this kind of very different world that I've been part of, you know, in one way being part of like um, deep around art and at the same time I, I did um, I did my science and I did physics and I did the uh, quantum physics for a long time and frontal wow. physics. And then I went into innovation and tried to bring impact and I felt like I just love the notion of talking to you and and then maybe uh, two days ago I was talking to someone that invented the, a way from worm to talk to each other with Roman. And then I can talk wow. to someone about healthcare. And then I talk to, to a designer about uh, interactive. And I just, I love those kind of bringing and, and, and the, the fun of really working on very different topics. Another part of working with someone creates a very experiential, uh, transcendental experience around uh, connecting with light and sound, for example, mm. Um, mm -hmm. in LA. Uh, other people were working with trying to build a way to measure EEGs and your brain activity, for example. Yeah. To, Amazing. So I think this is really what I love is to be able to really go deep in those different and explore. Like I'm very curious, like you, I think, and just want yeah. to learn from all these different people. And um, and the more you can do something that can really, when, when we were in my last company, we had some really powerful moment when we had physician calling us and we have been impacting a, a newborn that had a heart problem and it was just one day old or two days old. And, and we made a difference in their this family and in their kids' life. And I think there's nothing beyond that for me. I think this is the ultimate feeling of being fulfilled in one's work or one's life. And I just want to try to do more of that. And I realize the best way to do that for me, in my weird brain, is to connect all the different people and feel together and, and try to align them to try to solve yeah. this problem. I yes, love but it. I but I also think that connecting is wanting, but also to 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 actually do it is I think very important. Mm -hmm. Way I said, I'm tired of talking, you know, and and uh, you know now it's the next is now to really you know develop something that makes to some substance yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, it's really I'm a doer, and also I don't even have a website because I'm I'm in the, the field, you know, all the time. I'm being in being there is half my job, so. That is the, 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 the maybe disadvantage of, 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 you know, having so much passion for, <laughs> for something, amazing. you know, that you, you, you never really want to stop. And then you suddenly only discover that you, you better kind of sit down and sum up a bit. It's on, only moment you discover that is when all the copycats come and literally imitate what you do. Mm -hmm. Like you're paying the way and then uh, the ignorance the references is kind of long gone. Yeah. No. So I think it's, yeah, I think absolutely. I, I'm a doer. So to try to, to make things happen and try to have impact is I think essential here, you know, for all the knowledge production that we have done so many years, like you and me and others, and also Linda, you know, now is the time to really see how can we, you know, you know, put that back to, give that back to the world in, in a way that really, you know, benefits the world and make the world a better one for everyone, not only for a little small elite, call it fashion, art, or, you know, tech whatever yeah it's it's uh, yeah it's i think the moment is there yeah
And we have to democratize for, for sure. There's one yeah. thing that was interesting uh, is the fact that I think when I was working my first very project out of university was around blind people that were mm -hmm. sense deprived, isn't it, of their eyesight. And they had a very, I mean, I met one of the most remarkable people through that journey where my lawyers was a blind person at some point. Like people I was working with that were so inspiring, didn't have a, a very strong um, yeah. deprived of one sense. What did you learn from, from creating a life around smell? Because I'm sure you have a different way of looking at the world but, or smelling the world, I would say, through that journey. And what did you learn out of it, from it? Uh, most of all, I learned to be tolerant, like Linda, you said. I mean, tolerance is a big issue in my work. And, you know, the, the fact that I, I'm so tolerant, uh, it's that I discover a world I didn't know exists. So, you know, back to curiosity, it's like long, no limit for where the curiosity can take you. And when you don't have any borders in terms of what senses make any limitation of it, that it's like endless, you know. And also, you know, it's it's... You know, the fact that we are equipped with interfaces called the senses, five is just the over, it's like umbrella underneath each, we have multiple other, you know, you know, variation of, of you know, balance and cold and hot, et cetera, et cetera. So of course there is a purpose why the senses are there, you know, and if we don't use them properly, we are not, you know, happy. And I think the biggest illness of our time is disembodiment. And also with technology taking over where human left, you know, was really problematic, you know? And first we need to understand what the senses can do and are capable of doing beyond, you know, what we, we, we thought that they could do. And I think this is uh, what I accomplished in my work also to in include the sense of smell properly in, in, the, in the moment of perception and understand so wise the function of the other senses as well because yeah there is a balance there and we never only smell we never only look all the senses are always happening or it's simultaneously active so it's just to be aware you know, and, and also train the senses, the way you train your muscles, you can train the senses to be turned on and off. You know, it's amazing to understand the capacity of what the body is able to do. And this has made me a much more happy human being. And, and just to, you know, know that, wow, I'm so independent, you know, and I just need, you know, all what I'm equipped with, that's it. You know, that was for me the biggest wake up call. And the moment I discovered that the air contained particles, I can see, but they are there and I can catch them somehow if I have the right tool, was for me like a Newton apple falling on the head. It was like, wow, that's it, you know? So, yeah, and that kind of discovery, at least for, for, for me, was, uh, you know, changed my life. And, and I'm never going back to where I was before I discovered what smell, what impact can smell have in my life, you know? Wow. How do you see the difference between a smell and taste? Or is it so two different At the things? Same. It's the same taste, you know? It's the same, it's the same sense, mm. literally. Yeah, you know? so you have five or more directions of taste, and then you have, I don't know how many trillions direction of smells, you know? Every breath you do, you inhale up to 26, 6 trillion molecules. You know, it's, it's unbelievable, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, it's massive. And it's also not without a reason that it's so difficult to embed technology in the sense of smell, because whatever you do, end up being a kind of lame or, or kind of a, a joke, yeah? Because look behind me, you know, I have up to, you know, 5,000 molecules in my collection, plus 10,000 recordings, plus an alphabet of, of, you know, words and terms in relation to smell and language. So it's all this data, you know, you need to get the topic of smell across <laughs> in, in a way it deserves. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's also very interesting to see the sense of smell kind of self defend itself. I don't want to be digitalized. I w that's the only thing left that makes us human is the sense of smell. And also is the sense that immediately trigger emotion and memory quicker, bypassing, you know, rationality in brain, immediately activating memory and, and emotion. So it's, it's uh, in the end, you know, it's, it makes so much sense. What about you? What do you miss the most in, this day, in these days? 
I think it's people for me. I think I find that yeah. now I smell mean, of people. For you, yeah, the smell of people, oh, yeah. the smell of mm. uh, of of France. You know, because when we live in in different part of the world, and now at the moment we are, in, of course, in this pandemic, and so which is interesting around smell because everyone has a mask now, isn't it? So that's also very, I think, an interesting connection. But I agree with you that for me, what is fascinating about smell is that how incredibly interconnected it is to emotion. And I think yeah. maybe the new era that we're going to go into is to have a better understanding of how to trigger emotion and better master of our emotion. And I mm. think smell could be an incredibly part of that, I think, yeah. to make us happy Definitely. or make us remind us people more than images. I mean, the new photos yeah. of tomorrow might be just smells, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. No, we could go on forever on talking about smell, but Linda, you are the moderator here. <laughs> yeah, I listened to you and I was so happy about this. I, I think we can learn and I'm working on this kind of new world uh, outside instead of the, the big businesses of, of the fashion industry. I'm working on neighborhoods. I'm discovering new young designers in countries and cities I didn't know. So probably I'm picking up where you are started, uh, Cecil, in all those cities and all those people. I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot because when I stopped, uh, I wanted to go in February to the fashion shows and a COVID came up and uh, my husband said, I'm not sure that you have to go. So I unpacked my luggage and I put everything back in my wardrobe. And <laughs> since then, I'm another person. I thought I can do without and I can bring my knowledge and my experiences to other people on different places in the world and make a better world and bring more emotions and bring more passion. And that's what, what I am so passionate about. And that's why you are in the brain container. It's one of my 11 <laughs> containers <laughs> and I knew it was going to work. And, and you will be now the messengers to a lot of other people in the, in the fashion industry or not, because it's so strange and it's a pity that everything is so segmented, you know? Um, I think uh, what you said, uh, Fabien, that all those engineers, anthropologists and so on have to come together and, uh, and we have to try to do that. When, what Cecil said, we have, I'm a doer and me too, I'm a doer. I, you know that Cecil, I was always hands on and uh, did whatever there was to do and, and I give all my passion to that. But now it's a different world and I want to give my experience also to different people through, through this project. So that's a bit my answer. How is San Francisco coping with the new reality out there? If there's a new reality, I don't know because we have a <laughs> weird reality at the moment. Yeah, whatever, um, the new normal or I don't know what to yeah. call what well, The lack of normals anything. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I mean, in the US at the moment, I think there's, what's interesting of living in, in California is that you always have kind of this pioneering, you know, like energy here, you know, everything is possible. You, you can just, um, it's always like why not instead of why that you have some time in other mm -hmm. places in the world so that's very refreshing that you can dream you can think and want to change the world without any cynicism and people will take you seriously and on top of it maybe give you some time a lot of money to achieve that um of course now it's a weird time with covid and then of course the political climate here so i think there's a new world to be invented isn't it that is more tolerant and more balance against different group of people. I think you can't have just too much disparity because the system breaks, um, yeah. if that's the case. And I think we've seen that now. So I think it's an incredible time to invent yeah. what, what uh, you and, and Linda have been talking about is that bringing all those kind of talent to remember things differently and, and to be more, I think, um, caring of everyone and inclusive um, and global because through the internet, internet is fantastic. And it's like, free global distribution. <laughs> I mean, that what <laughs> you're saying now, everyone can see it tomorrow all around the world. And of course, Linda, that's all the idea of containers. Isn't it? But nobody can but smell it. That's, yeah, the, that's the next it. piece. So that's what so you have to exactly. do. That's the you know, next, and yeah. everybody suffer because I, I cannot yeah. assume anymore. It's like, I cannot no. see these avatars yeah. or these zombies on the, on the, on the, in the box, you know? It's just like obnoxious. I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm over it, yeah. <laughs> I, was really uh, sure. that. I think it would yeah. be wonderful to record it and maybe your phone would have one of their sensors so you can record and sense your 
uh, uh, my passion. Uh, yeah. Uh, Don't you get it? I just send it. Fabian, I just send it. Do you get it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I would like to smell it and you receive it. And of be able course. To smell it. Yes, yes, yes. It's on its way, okay? Good. I just Thank imagine. You. I, you made my day because connecting is, is what was the purpose of this interview, of this conversation. <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to continue the conversation, you both, and probably something will come out. So I hope that this is going to happen. And I thank you both so tremendously for this wonderful conversation. Have a nice day, Fabia. And Bikis, Cecil, you're a fantastic woman. Ciao, and have a nice day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, ciao.